Hello, everybody, and welcome to another absolutely amazing and awesome episode of the Purpose and Profit Sisterhood podcast. I'm Jeanette Anderson, and today I'm here with the fabulous and very bodacious Kendra Corman. Hi, Kendra. Welcome. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. I am happy to have you here. We've talked a couple of times, and you're just you're just cool. <laughs> I like I, I like you too. Cool people. So that's really, in, uh, really fun. So I'll, as usual, give you the official intro for Kendra, and then we're going to find out some juicy tidbits about her that you wouldn't guess. And then we're going to launch into a fascinating, obviously very current topic around uh, saving time in communications by leveraging AI, artificial intelligence. In- intelligence. Uh, So it's obviously something that's been in the news a lot. It's obviously very topical, but it's also very helpful if you use it properly. So uh, I'll tell you about Kendra. So Kendra Corman is the founder of H2H Consulting, drawing from her rich experience managing the iconic Jeep brand and innovating marketing in the insurance sector. Not an easy sector to innovate. Um, With an MBA from Michigan State University, she's now dedicated to empowering small businesses and nonprofits through actionable digital courses and marketing strategies. Love it. All right. So that's what you're doing now. And we're going to be talking about AI. But given all of that, you know, kind of business background and so forth, what's something that people would never guess about you if they hadn't, if they didn't really know you, and maybe even your friends don't know. Ooh, something my friends don't know. That's going to be a challenge. Cause usually my little hidden thing is I'm like, I love school. I'm an addicted to school. I <laughs> like, I was that kid that was like, yes, school starting back and we're done with the summer stuff. Awesome. Um, so I've been a geek my whole, my whole life. Um, but let me see. Oh, so I started making my own broth. So oh. I go to Costco and I buy the chickens that are a really good deal. They're their loss leaders. And I save the bones. I save like carrots and scraps of onions and celery and all that fun stuff. And I make my own bone broth, which is very few people know that about me. And That's interesting. I love it. What's even funnier is you, I thought you said I make my own bras. Like no. <laughs> and I go to Costco with the chickens and I'm like, where is she going with this? Does she <laughs> her broth? Like, what is she talking about? Okay, broth. Broth is broth, bone broth. Understandable when you're talking. Which is about- awesome because then like I use bone I use the bone broth in everything. I use it to make rice. I use it just uh-huh. yeah, I love it. Cool. That's very cool. I I wouldn't have guessed that. Um, so tell us a little bit about kind of the, yeah, the origin of your business journey, but even before that, what's your why? Why do you do the work you do and not just specifically AI and even digital marketing or whatever, but why do you care about any of this? Well, first I'm, I'm addicted to learning. So that that's first, right? Because I think it's important that if you're going to help businesses, small businesses, nonprofits, things like that, and you're not interested in learning about their business and what they do and all the different things that that you can do with that business, I don't think you're in the right space. Um, But so again, I love learning. I love trying. I love experimenting. And I love making a difference. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the biggest thing for me. Um, Late last year, but actually um, in a couple of weeks, it'll be a year. um, I fired one of my clients, one of my HDH consulting clients because they weren't listening anymore and I couldn't make an impact. I couldn't make a difference. And if I can't make a difference, I don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. So I just, I was struggling with if they're not going to listen to me, Mm -hmm. then I'm not getting fulfilled and I don't want to do this. Yeah. So I fired a client late last year because I couldn't make a difference. And um, they're like the fourth client I think I've fired since I've been in business, which is almost 10 years now. And it's, it's hard to do, but I do believe it's the right thing to do because I'm not, I'm going to get frustrated. They're going to get frustrated the whole nine yards. But again, I really do it to make a difference. And I love measuring the success of a marketing campaign and being like, yes, we just made a million dollars or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, I love that little 
kind of uh, instructional aside about the importance of only working with clients that you're aligned with. And it can be really tough when you're an entrepreneur, especially if funds are tight, to have the chutzpah and the ovaries to say, that's it. I'm not doing it even though I may need the money, even though I don't want you to disapprove and you know any of those other considerations that come up. But if it's not in alignment, if it's not fulfilling, if it's not true win-win, then it's not actually a win for anybody. So I love that you were brilliant and brave and did that. So how did you start getting interested in marketing and digital marketing? What's your kind of journey been? So when I was at Penn State undergrad a long, long, long time ago, at the dawn of the internet, it feels like, um, I was... um, I was a business major in marketing and I decided, nope, I don't want to do this. I'm going to do elementary education. I lasted about two weeks as an elementary education major. And then I went major shopping. So I met with advisors in all of the different colleges across Penn state. And I picked advertising and public relations and just coming up with the marketing plans and the advertising plans really it was a lot more numbers based than a lot of people thought. And it Mm -hmm. was about creative and reaching a target audience. And it was really fun um, for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, I moved and was at Chrysler, worked my way up from the call center um, and where I was answering phones of people that were calling because they had warranty issues or repair issues or a question Um, and so then I worked my way up Mm -hmm. and ended up as the SRT marketing manager, manager, which was street and racing technology. So the Viper, the SRT eight grand Cherokee, all of those vehicles that went super fast and stuff like that. And so I got exposed into marketing there and again, worked my way up, became the Jeep advertising manager before I took the buyout before the great recession in 2008 And the difference that I could make, the impact that I had was just, it, it fueled me. Mm. And then I went to a wholesale insurance firm that's global um, and became their marketing director and talk about making a difference, just adding in some like basic policies, asking all of our branch managers who their big, you know, what were their big goals? And finding out that the goals didn't match the tactics. And so, you know, scrapping a lot of that and making a lot of changes to, um, to where the company actually grew during the recession, where a lot of people were not. And that had a lot of power in it. Uh, I got my MBA from Michigan State and finally had the confidence to say, I'm going to do this on my own Mm. and go out there and do it. And I've been doing that ever since. Cool. And so when was that that you made your leap? 2014. So made the decision in March of 2014, set up my LLC in April of 2014, um, went on an Alaskan cruise in June and came back and gave my notice. Okay. So how did you make that leap? I, I sometimes will ask this of people um, because making the leap from corporate to entrepreneur is a big leap. Um, and especially if you haven't been an entrepreneur ever before, it's a very different mindset. So first of all, how did you give yourself permission to be brave enough to go out on your own? What, what was it that it required for you to tip that scale and say, okay, I'm going to leave? So they always say that um, what, the pain of change has to be less than the pain of standing still. And the pain of standing still was a little bit more than I would have liked. So um, I just, I needed a change. I was ready for something different. Um, again, I wasn't making as big of an impact as I wanted to. And money was becoming a lot more prevalent. And so I'm more of a budget conscious marketer. I'm not a Ooh, let's go sponsor this and let's go do that on these big scales because I like to track return on investment. I like to be there, you know, again, making that measurable difference. And so since I wasn't doing as much of that, it was a little bit frustrating to me and it was no longer a good fit. Mm -hmm. So I knew I either had to find something else or go out on my own. 
I had lunch with um, the head of my MBA program and I said, okay, I'm done. I think I'm going to quit. He goes, do not quit. He goes, you should start your own business. And I said, well, I've always thought of, about owning a subway. I just don't have the money to start it up with like the whole franchise thing, right? Yeah. Or bagel shop or something, right? And because that was the only thing that came to mind. And he goes, no, marketing. And I said, well, who's going to hire me for that? And he goes, somebody already pays you. I was like, oh, huh, didn't think about that. So it was actually pretty cool. I started doing research, meeting with friends of mine that had started their businesses and really said, okay, is this for me? Mm -hmm. And was like, yes, it is. I can do this. I'm going to make it happen. My husband said, no, you're not. <laughs> He goes, and then I said, yes, I am. It's too late. I already turned in my notice. And then he said, okay, well, as long as you can still come up with your half of the mortgage, we're all good, mm. which actually made, you know, made it a sink or swim situation. Yeah. And I swam because yeah. I was not sinking. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's a bit of kind of reverse support. Um, it motivated you, even though he wasn't behind you. Um, uh, so that's good. And it is actually a very common thing for people who are transitioning out of corporate. A lot of their friends, family, loved ones don't get it, aren't from that perspective, see it as, you know, there be dragons and it's that you're going to fall off the edge of the earth and so on. Um, and so that can be very challenging when- And I should say that he's my biggest supporter. Like yeah. he is unbelievable. It's just, he does changes in his thing. Yes. Well, and, and that's not his frame of reference, right? He hasn't been there, done that. That's not where he comes from. So, um, so he supported you in a different way by just giving you something, something to motivate. Motivation. <laughs> exactly. So it's fascinating. And I think in, within that story, we're, we are going to get to AI, I promise everybody. Um, within that story, there's some steps there. One, you reached out for support. Um, so you reached a point, a threshold of, of needing a change, being discomforted or uncomfortable with where you were, uh, not necessarily knowing where you were going or how you were going to do it, but you were committed to making a change regardless of that. So that's a very important thing. People think they have to have the road clear a lot of the time in order to make the leap. Most of the time we leap into the void. We don't necessarily leap into, you know, knowing exactly what the next step and the next step and the next step are. And if you're not willing to do that, chances are you're never going to leap. So um, it's, it's about that. Then you got support. You called in someone who had a better perspective. They gave you a different, different context, a different way of seeing things, uh, which is often why we need those, those mentors and coaches and people to see us differently. Um, cause then we can see possibilities differently. And then you did research. So you gave your analytical left brain some, some information that it needed to feel a little more comfortable, uh, and give you some concrete starting points. Um, you brought your creativity to it in terms of, okay, how do I, how do I do this? What are some possibilities? Where do I go with this? Um, cause I heard, you know, very left and right brain in your corporate world. Uh, and then you pulled the cord in spite of deterrence and, um, people who were not necessarily a hundred percent on board. So cool. Very, very cool. And, uh, thanks for sharing that. I think that that's really instructional for a lot of people are like, yeah, but how do I do that? So that's really cool. And what was, just before we move into the topic, what would you say is one thing you would wish you knew when you made that leap that you now know? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, or had done. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think the biggest thing that I did in the beginning is I tried to run things a little bit like my big corporate world. Mm. It doesn't run that way. Yeah. Roll with it. Yeah. Wing it and call it a day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of the biggest changes for people to make is that things don't work that way. A, you don't have that budget. B, you don't have the resources and the people and the support. C, you don't have that reach. You don't have any of the things that corporations have. So I get really frustrated with most um, entrepreneurial books because most of them have been written about 
by people who came out of corporate and they just try and downsize the notions. And it's like, no, these, this is like apples and forks. This is not just let me squish this concept or this strategy down. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a separate rant. Now let's talk about AI. Um, and speaking of that, one of the things that as an entrepreneur, you got to figure out is how do you get more done with without all of those things? Um, and AI has been a big boon for a lot of people because it allows us to do more. It allows it, people who are not comfortable with writing to get more writing done. It can give us more information. It used to be that a lot of AI was just giving us made up stuff. Now it actually does research as well. People used to think the stuff it was bringing was actually real, but it wasn't. It was just made up. Um, I didn't realize that initially. And I was asking for quotes and it would give me a quote from Gandhi that he never said, but he might have because it sounded like him. It it sounds like him. And I was Mm -hmm. like, I thought he had actually said it anyway. Okay. But that's changed now. So let's talk about AI and how it can leverage a small business person or a solopreneur or even, you know, mid-sized businesses and large businesses. How do we save time in our communications with AI? Okay. So first off, let's frame what AI is. And I heard this on a webinar a while ago. It is an intern with unlimited hours. Oh, okay. That is just such a powerful thing to me. When I heard that, I was like, yes, that's exactly what it is. The Mm -hmm. key to AI is to make sure that you are giving it all of the information that it needs and the direction it needs, and then that you review its work. Okay. So that I think is one of the most important pieces of AI when you're thinking about how to leverage it. Um, Because you've got an unpaid intern with unlimited hours and they can do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty smart intern. But only if you give it really good direction. Yes. That's the key piece. Well, and I think the piece that you mentioned about and then review its work, you wouldn't let an intern just submit articles and things like that without vetting them because they aren't you. And so if they're trying to write in your voice and so forth, as much as you give it information, it still needs to be reviewed. Um, Because I think that's where some people are kind of going off track there. And I get marketing that I know is AI generated without any intervention on, you know, on it. So, So tell us a little bit about what are some of the things that AI can do? There's a lot of different things, but what are some of the things? There's a ton of different things that AI can do. Um, I love to leverage it for writing, Um, but you can use it to generate drafts, generate ideas. So uh, one of my, um, one of my clients that I do their social media posts is a small business attorney. Well, the beneficial ownership information requirement Mm -hmm. through the corporate transparency act comes into play in January of 2024. I'm like, please review the FinCEN's website and let me know five different ideas of things that I could post about to give people insights and information into this this BOI reporting. It gave me a list of ideas. Mm -hmm. Then I'm able to write that for her. Mm -hmm. I can also have it draft it, Mm -hmm. you know, and when it writes, Hey, aspiring business owners, I can cut that piece out because it's like, we're not saying that on LinkedIn, Uh, but it can give you, again, brainstorm ideas. It can review and summarize websites and um, things for you. It can create personas off of information that you give it. And it can build some really good ones too. I was actually pretty impressed. I put a lot of customer information for one of the marketing plans that I was working on. And I was like, yeah, build me a persona. Here's all the information. And it did. And it was a good one. So I was actually really impressed. Persona. Hmm? What do you mean by persona? So I was telling it, um, you know, the average age, the job description, a little bit about their concerns and what they were dealing with. I was, I gave it, um, you know, why they purchase how the purchase process is going through the company. Mm -hmm. I gave it quite a bit of detail about the target audience. And I said, build me a persona. So it built me one. Um, It, it gave me 
you know, an age, the job title, which wasn't exactly what I, what I did. Cause I gave it a little bit more of a generic job title, but it gave me a specific job title. It told me what type of publications they read. It told me that they had two kids in college and all of it made sense. Right. So, and then I was actually able to ask. So I took that persona, put it into a different chat and then said, Hey, pretend you're this person. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you some questions. And I was able to ask them some questions about some changes we were looking to do to the marketing. And it gave me input. Is it a hundred percent like doing, you know, actual focus group? No, but it gave me a different way to think about it mm-hmm. and a different, it challenged me, especially for small business owners and solopreneurs. If you have a team that isn't at your level and isn't thinking at your level of the strategy, where you want to go. Mm-hmm. AI can be that partner. You just have to give it enough information. Okay. I love that idea. And I would have never thought of it to have it actually to survey it as if it's your demographic. In, in addition to going out and actually vetting it and surveying your actual demographic to see how much it overlaps, but also it would just give you even more tone and more refinement on your questions when you do actually go and survey your people, which I think is a brilliant idea. Um, So it can generate a lot of copy and it can generate um, personas, which I think is brilliant. So you can really articulate your um, avatar and, and use, have conversations with it, which is great. What are some other things that you've used it for? So I use it to do social posts. I use it in my podcast all the time. So it cuts about three hours out of my podcasting. I do a lot of batching with my content creation. So when I'm doing podcasts, I record three to five in one day. Mm -hmm. Well, they may not be releasing for two months. Well, I got busy because I just recorded three to five podcasts. So I'm not editing that day. Right. So I added a different day. It might be four weeks later. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what we talked about. So I'm able to put the transcript, which the transcript is AI generated Mm -hmm. into chat GPT or a similar system. And it will give me a summary of what we talked about. It'll give me show notes. It'll with key messages. It'll give, it'll create social posts for me out of it. It'll create YouTube descriptions. Um, Just really whatever I want to give it. Cool. Um, And, and so you mentioned chat GPT. Tell us who are, what are some of the platforms that you use and that you recommend or wouldn't recommend? Which ones have you tried that you kind of went me? So chat GPT, the paid, paid program um, is I think still the superior option. Um, there is some research saying that it's getting lazier. I agree a little bit with that, um, but I'll just push or come back later um, if it's not going to give me what I need. Another system that I use is Claude.ai, C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I. This one, so the magic Mm -hmm. that I like to call that happens that is A-I, because that's beyond some of my capabilities, um, is created differently Mm -hmm. between how ChatGPT learns and how Claude learns. So I actually use both of them. Um, Claude cannot search the internet, but they can do a lot of different things. The one thing that I do like about Claude is that you get a certain number of free searches a day mm-hmm. and it's of their paid plan. Their paid plan just gets more searches, if that makes sense. So I, I do like that. I use um, riverside.fm to record my podcasts mm. and it uses AI to give me clips to resize the clips, to do the transcript, all of that stuff. I use Otterdat AI for a lot of my meeting transcripts. Mm -hmm. So when I'm meeting with clients or um, different things like that, it'll actually take notes um, during the meeting so that I have all of that information. Mm -hmm. Um, Canva's got some cool AI tools. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't use a lot of the image generating AI tools The reason why is I would rather pay for something, Um, but I would say if you're just taking free images off the internet, use AI generated images over that um, because there's a lot of copyright infringement issues right now going around 
on on things like that. So companies are using um, AI, AI tools to yeah. scrape the internet and then tell you send you cease and desist with like nine hundred euro dollar bills or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it can be a little bit scary there. So if you're not paying for your images, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, just make sure you're using AI generated, I would say as a backup, yeah. but you want to be very careful when yeah. it comes to the copyright issues. Yeah, absolutely. And AI generated, um, you know, I used to think, or I thought until a conversation a couple of days ago, that that meant that it would generate, you know, kind of anime type images or cartoonish type things, but it actually generates photo photographs, but it's not like it, it can't create a photograph of me, but it can create a photograph of someone like me sitting at a computer and I can make the computer branded in my colors and I can put my image on, you know, an image or my logo on the computer and I can have a plant on the desk and so forth. So I can set it up so that it's fits for my positioning and my branding more than any image I can find online. Um, so I haven't started using that, but it's on the notes for next year for sure. And I love the idea of saving time on podcasts, but even just meetings, recapping that, um, you know, I use or have used Fathom AI on, on mm -hmm. Zoom meetings, and it will send me and the other person a, a task list based on what we said we were going to do and action items. And most of the time they're accurate, which is kind of weird and scary. Like there are parts of AI that are scary. So what There's do you- There's a lot of AI that's scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what did you say if someone's just getting started, what's one of the best uses of AI? If you're so, just, if you're so, let's say an entrepreneur or solopreneur. Start playing with um, chat GPT. Start asking it questions. If you want to get started with AI, you don't have to use it in your business. Yeah. Okay. Have it do a meal plan for you. Give it some ingredients and have it do a recipe for you. Have it um, do some different creative things that are not necessarily, you know, you're going to be putting it up and, you know, you're not, you're not happy with it or, you know, they don't have to write a thousand word blog post or anything like that. Start small, start using it in your daily life. And it's amazing how much you'll get used to talking to it mm -hmm. and then be able to elevate what you're doing. Exactly. Well, and you can use it even like a, a simple example is use it to ask it to generate high converting um, social media post titles about a particular topic and um, then take those titles though don't just take any of the, it'll give you a list and then I, when I've plugged those into title testing tools some are good and some are not so even though you've told it high converting it probably needs more information about what that means mm -hmm. and who it's high converting for. So you have to put the avatar in there as well, or the audience. Um, and so test it out and find the titles that convert well, or go test it with your audience, but it will give you a starting point. Um, Cause often titles for articles, or like you said, ideas for social media posts, that's a great um, initial way to do that. And you also have some suggestions in a gift that you have for everyone, right? So tell us about yes. ebook. So, um, yeah, no. So I have a download that's five ways to effectively use AI in your marketing. And we'll talk a little bit about how to use it for brainstorming, enhancing your social media posts, things like that. Um, and then, yeah, so it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's really, it's where I started. Yeah. Getting with my feet wet with AI. And then um, then you can build from there. Quick okay. thing, though, I do want to say I have made a decision like not to upload my picture into any of the AI generators. You know, there's AI generated headshots and things like that. Read mm -hmm. the terms and conditions of all of the different AI systems. Most of the time you are giving them unlimited access to anything you put in there. So you, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, just be a little bit careful and cautious. Um, AI is a little bit of the wild west. I love it. It has replaced a ton of time for me, mm -hmm. but I'm still very cautious and very careful with it. Mm, good cautionary note because yeah, it can actually 
um, you're putting lot, as much out as you're pulling back in. Um, and, and, oh, and it can repurpose content for you. So you can upload an article and tell it to give you, you know, five posts or something. Uh, okay. So where can they go get that free resource? The five ways to learn AI. You can go to KendraCorman.com slash AI, Kendra okay. with a K, Corman with a C dot AI uh, or slash AI. And uh, you can just go ahead and download it right there. Awesome. And Corman is C-O-R-M-A-N, no E. And uh, Kendra is, as it sounds, K-E-N-D-R-A um, dot com and slash AI. Uh, not A-L. Make sure you get to right. Stick it. <laughs> um, and uh, by all means, because I said that because I just put it in and it didn't quite work properly, but um, it will be working. So I would encourage you to go and get that. It's five ways to really think about how do I um, make the most of this and where do I get started? And tell us a little bit more. Yeah, see, I think I had an L on it because AI actually works. Um, tell us a little bit more about how people can reach you in general or work with you or how you can support them. Yeah, if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to email me at Kendra, uh, support at KendraCorman.com. I'm always happy to answer questions because we're all in this together. So feel free if you've got any. You can also uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, it's Kendra Corman. And with no underscore spaces or anything like that, you can find me there. And you can always check out my podcast, imperfectmarketing.kendracorman.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. That's also on YouTube. And Jeanette was my guest last week. And so hers released. And I got a ton of different snippets of that all throughout my uh, podcast episode. Awesome. Love that. Thank you. And um, I really, really encourage you to reach out to Kendra, not only in terms of getting this resource, but also just how to think about things differently when it comes to your business. How do, they, how do you make the leap? And how do you get seen and heard more out there in the world? And, um, and how do you really do it smartly? Because really that's what we're talking about here is we only have so many hours. So how do we make that work for us? So reach out to Kendra, get her resource and uh, please do Post your comments on this podcast. If you've got questions, go to the Purpose and Profit Sisterhood Facebook group and put your questions in there. Uh, you can also post comments on the podcast on Apple, Spotify, and all the major platforms. Um, we would love you to uh, interact and engage with us. Leave us feedback. What works for you about this? What are you curious about? And what else would you like to know about this topic as well? Thanks so much for listening. Thank you for being here, Kendra. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful and bodacious week, everybody. Bye for now. Thanks. <laughs>